Hey everyone, welcome to part 35 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will implement the run mechanic. So if I choose the run action, then I'll run away from the battle. Okay, and we'll also fix some of the issues that we currently have when catching new Pokemons. So let's look at how to do those. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So first let's look at an issue that we currently have once we catch Pokemons. So here I'm in a battle with the wild Pokemon and if I open my party screen since there are four members in my party only first four slots are visible, right? The last two slots are actually deactivated. So now let's go back to the battle and catch this wild Pokemon. So once we catch this, it will be added to our party. So currently our party will have five members. Right, so now if I start a battle again, okay, and if I go to my party screen, it should show five members, right? But here you can see that we have an exception saying that index is out of range. So the problem here is we have five Pokemons in our party, but we only have four member slot UI to display the Pokemons, right? We have five Pokemons, but we only have four slots. So this is because we deactivated the other two slots in the previous battle. So this is the issue. Let's look at how to fix this. So if you look at the party screen script, while initializing the party screen, we're getting all the member slots and storing it in an array. Okay. So we have six member slots. And what we're doing is, if the number of Pokemons in our party is less than 6, then we'll disable the rest of the slots. So this is the problem. Okay, so when we start a new battle, get components in children function will only return the one that is currently active. And we won't get the disabled ones. So in order to get the disabled slots also, what we can do is we have another override for this function that takes a boolean called include inactive so if we pass true here then this function will also return inactive or disabled member slots and since it will also return disabled slots we have to make sure to enable it before setting the data of the member okay so before setting the data I'll just enable the member slot by calling set active true. All right, so this should solve the problem. So let's just go ahead and test this. I'll start a battle real quick. Okay, so if I open the party screen, right now I only have four members. So let me try to capture this Pokemon. So I was able to capture it and it will be added to our party. So let's start another battle and test if the issue still exists. Okay. So in the new battle, if we go to the party screen, you can see that there is no issue. And the Pokemon that we just got is shown in our party screen. All right. So next let's implement the run mechanic. So in my battle system script, I'll create a new function called try to escape. So this function is going to be a coroutine. Okay, so in this function, first I'll set the state to PC so that nothing else happens 
when this coroutine is executed. All right, so next, we should not allow the player to run if it's actually a trainer battle, right? So I'll check if it's a trainer battle. And in that case, first I'll show dialog like you can't run from trainer battles. And then I'll set the state back to running turn so that the battle will continue. And finally, I'll just use yield break to break out of this core routine. So if it's a trainer battle, then we won't allow the player to escape. And otherwise, if it's a battle with wild Pokemon, then we should attempt to run. So we'll use a small algorithm to determine if the player can run or not. So I'm going to use the algorithm from Gen 3 and 4. So if the wild Pokemon speed is slower than the player's current Pokemon, then the player will be able to escape successfully. So first let me store the speed of player and enemy Pokemon in two variables. Okay, so now if the speed of the enemy Pokemon is less than that of the speed of the player Pokemon, then the player should be able to escape. So I'll show a dialogue like ran away safely and then I'll call the battle over function to end the battle. Okay. So otherwise, if this condition is not true, then we have to calculate a value f using this formula and then a random number generated between 0 and 255 is less than f then the player escapes and otherwise the escape will fail so this is the formula used to calculate the f value all right so here you can see we need the escape attempts which is the number of times the player has tried to escape in this battle so you can see that over here in the formula C is the number of times the player has tried to escape so right now we are not keeping track of this count so let's actually create a simple variable to keep track of this so I'll create an integer called escape attempts and in the setup battle I'll set the escape attempts to 0 and when we call try to escape I'll actually increment its value okay so now we have calculated F successfully and next if a random number generated between 0 and 255 is less than that of f then the player will be able to escape successfully so i'll just copy these two lines and paste it over here and next if this condition is not true then the escape will fail okay so i'll show a dialog like can't escape And then I'll set the state back to running turn in order to continue the battle. Alright, so we are done with the try to escape function. Now all we have to do is call this when the player selects the run action. Okay, so let's go to the handle action selection. And in this function, if the run action is selected we don't want to directly call the try to escape function but instead we want to call the run turns function and pass battle action dot run 
as the action okay and inside the run turns function right now we are handling move switch pokemon and use item actions so let's also add another else if condition which we can use to handle the run action okay so here i'll call try to escape coroutine that we just created so that's it we are done with the implementation of the run mechanic so let's go to unity and test this let me start a battle real quick okay so since charmander is higher in level it should also have much higher speed than Pidgey so if we try to escape it should be able to run away safely but if we use a Pokemon that has much lesser speed than Pidgey then there's a chance that we might not be able to escape okay so if I use run this time I was able to run away safely but yeah there is a chance that we might not be able to escape so you can go ahead and test this for four to five times and once in a while you won't be able to escape from the battle all right so we are done with the run mechanic i'll stop the video here and in the next video we will implement experience and level up so if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me a lot so, I'll see you in the next video.